Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by the respiratory quotient or RQ. You should then be able to describe why the respiratory quotient is different for different respiratory substrates. And this is for the OCR spec. Now I'm going to explain the respiratory quotient based on the molecules involved in respiration. This may seem a bit tricky, but stick with it and you will get it. Now, when organisms respire, they can use a carbohydrate such as glucose. However, respiration can use other respiratory substrates such as lipids or proteins. Now, if we know the amount of carbon dioxide produced during respiration and the amount of oxygen consumed, then we can work out which molecule or substrate is being respired. And to do that, we calculate the respiratory quotient or RQ. I'm going to show you how to work out the RQ for different respiratory substrates. We're going to start with carbohydrates such as glucose. The aerobic respiration of glucose requires oxygen and produces carbon dioxide and water. Now this chemical equation is not balanced, so I'm going to balance it now. One molecule of glucose contains six carbon atoms. Each carbon atom makes one molecule of carbon dioxide, so we make six molecules of carbon dioxide. One molecule of glucose also contains 12 hydrogen atoms. We need two hydrogen atoms to make each molecule of water, so we make six molecules of water. Now we need to calculate the number of oxygen molecules required for this reaction. We have 12 atoms of oxygen in the carbon dioxide, and we have six atoms of oxygen in the water. So based on that, this reaction needs 18 atoms of oxygen. However, each glucose molecule contains six oxygen atoms. So that means that the reaction needs 12 additional oxygen atoms. Each molecule of oxygen has two oxygen atoms. So for 12 atoms of oxygen, we need six oxygen molecules. So here's the balanced chemical equation for the aerobic respiration of glucose. Now the respiratory quotient or RQ is the amount of carbon dioxide produced divided by the amount of oxygen consumed. In the case of glucose, we produce six carbon dioxide molecules and we consume six oxygen molecules. So the RQ for glucose is six divided by six, which is one. So if we get an RQ of one, this tells us that the organism is respiring a carbohydrate such as glucose. Okay, I'm showing you here the equation for the aerobic respiration of a fatty acid, which we find in lipids. Different fatty acids have different formulas, but they all produce the same RQ value. I'd like you to balance this equation, so pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, from one molecule of this fatty acid, we can make 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 16 molecules of water. To make these, we need 48 atoms of oxygen. The fatty acid already contains two oxygen atoms, so we need 46 additional oxygen atoms. Each molecule of oxygen has two oxygen atoms, so for 46 atoms of oxygen, we need 23 oxygen molecules. Now, if we calculate the RQ for this reaction, we can see that it comes to 0.7. So if we get an RQ of 0.7, this tells us that the organism is respiring a lipid. Now, with proteins, the RQ is difficult to calculate. That's because different proteins contain different amino acids and each amino acid has a different formula. However, generally speaking, if an organism is respiring protein, then the RQ will be around 0.9. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by the respiratory quotient. 